DIY Duke here. We're at a remodel, a drywall job, and the folks that live here, I did a drywall job for them like eight years ago, so they added on, actually turned their garage into a master bedroom. So they called me back to do the finishing work on it because I had done a hand texture and they wanted it to match. They already hung the job, so I'm coming in here now is the taper. And also, we're going to be applying bull nose corner beam, and that's the round stuff. And that's going to go in all the closet wraps and the door wraps. They're going to wrap the windows with wood. So first thing we'll do is we'll hang this corner beam. And I'll show you how to cut these corners so they fit nicely in here and there's no gaps and it's easier to run that metal. So let's go ahead and get started. Most people would do it this way because they don't know to do the 45. They run it this way and then they run it this way. And of course you can see the problem with that. You'd have to tape that and mud that and it's a major problem and it'll probably crack. So this is how the closet's supposed to look with the bullnose attached. These are finished corners, 45, and then it'll be mudded and it'll come out good. This is how you do it. You're going to take your bullnose and you're going to do the top piece first because these pieces are going to come up to it instead of cutting in between two finished pieces. So I'm going to run this past and run this one past and go ahead and cut that length like so. Then you can put that back up there and go ahead and use your thumb to mark that and go in like so. If it's on the right side you can come in and then do this, and you're going to 45 that, like so. And that will be in like that, and then you're going to do the same to the other side, just using your thumb as a mark. The left side's easier to cut because you can just come around and go ahead and make that 45. You're going to put it up, and then you're going to just go ahead and Tack it on there. And then you're going to go ahead and grab the two side pieces. Normally the hangers put the corner bead on most of the time, but when it's a homeowner and they're not quite sure how to do it, then in this case the taper, which is me and the, and the texture, the finisher, I'll go ahead and put it on. So that's why the corner bead wasn't on before we got here. If you're going to use nails, you're going to want to start in the center. You're going to do here and here and hold that tight with one hand. And then just work your way to the corner and then go ahead and fasten that. And then start at the middle and work your way back up. If you start at the end and start going this way, sometimes you end up with it with it shifting and moving and not getting in there straight. So everybody starts in the middle and goes, and goes that way. It's just a good point to start when you're hanging either bull nose or square corner bead or whatever. There's also the tape on corner bead that you use mud with, which is a whole different DIY. That is not fastened at all with nails or staples. We're going to go ahead and use a staple gun on this though. 
and we're going to use a stapler like this, just a small port of cable stapler, and it uses inch and a quarter staples, which are basically the same length as drywall screws, and they do play well. So we're going to start over here. We're going to put that up and go ahead and attach it. Go down. Again, use that one hand up to hold it in place because you might, if you don't get some wrinkling, go ahead, hats that. Some people do a double on the bottom, and then you can just come back and fill that in. Like you can go every six inches. Then you can take any kind of wrinkles out of it that way. Really good way to do it. And I do it that way because I hate hitting my thumbs. And the way my hands shake, it's, it's hard for me to fasten with nails. So the stapler, excellent way to go. And it's just attached to a small two horsepower compressor over there. You don't have to have two horsepower, you have a horsepower. Just enough to run this little stapler. A really good way to go. And once you get it stapled, you're ready to put the mug on. And that's a whole other story. If you want to be a successful drywaller and get more jobs, it's good to be a clean drywaller. So whatever mess is made, like this residue from trimming this out, we're going to talk a little bit about why we should trim these corners out too, or when you're doing the hanging process, how to hang the sheetrock so this bull nose fits on it well. But going back to the clean drywall thing, if you're clean, people are going to appreciate it so much. And go, hey Mary, you should get so and so because you know all the other drywallers I've ever gotten. I'm telling you, they're filthy slobs, pigs. They track in mud and they leave drywall products everywhere on my carpet, on my driveway. Don't use those guys. Use these guys because they're good, efficient, and clean. Women appreciate that. Looks good.